We are here with uh, Clara, who's 15, and I would like to talk uh, with her about her uh, relationship with, uh, on one hand, uh, the experience with high-tech technology of nowadays, and on the other hand, uh, with the um, fact that a certain ancient technologies, such as writing by hand, for example, can't be substituted by the new technology that we are. So, um, Clara, the first question is, what is your uh, relationship with technology? You like computers, for example. It's yeah. very important for you. Um, the technology is a way to communicate it with the other people. And technology, it's something really cool, in fact. It's, you know, you can do everything you want with the technology. You can, you can see new way of thinking. But technology, it's not all. Sometimes you just need to come back and see behind you. And, for example, the books. <laughs> And a book, it's an object. And the problem with technology is that there's no more objects. All and everything is in the technology, is in a computer, in the iPad, in the iPhone. But sometimes you just need to touch. This is for the book to the pages. You must touch the pages. This is a real object. Because the problem with technology is that it's not real. It's you can't touch it. You can see it. You can imagine. When you can touch. So sometimes you just need to touch to come in the reality. The books are really important in life, and that's why. You must have a book, it's like I have a friend and you grow with it. Sometimes when you're in your bath, you drop it in your bath and he's wet and but he's living with you and that's why an ebook it's not the same thing. Because a book has a life and when you many years after you just come and you say you see uh, your uh, a little bit of chocolate in your books and you say oh yes it was uh, that time and I, I was uh, I, I was uh, eating uh, uh, a pudding or, or everything else and a life is full of books and the books are they, I think they have souls <laughs> and you found that also uh, for reading, certainly, but also for writing, right? Yeah, because writing on a computer is... There is no more soul. And when you write some t something, a text or nothing, just when you write, you need to get your soul in the text. This is not words everywhere. <laughs> this is... Uh, you like writing, you like writing your letters, you like... Writing is something more than just typing on a computer. It's... It's... Uh, mm, you're happy to write because you like the smell of the paper, you like the anchor in your hands, because when your, your hands are dirty, you say, yes, I've done something. I done really something, not just a file in the computer. What about in school? Do you feel that a school is on, we could call it rather an analogical school, it's, it's yeah. rather old in conception, yeah. no? Yeah, it's an old conception, but not in the good form, I think. Because, yes, we can use computer in, in school, we can, we can use technology in school, but the way of thinking, the school way of thinking, is old. It's terribly old. It's a myth. It became a myth. You must learn like that. So it's a myth. But 
sometimes you just want something else. Do you think what would, uh, in a word, be what the school needs most today? Mm, space. Space for the mind, for the creativity, because we need creativity to live and to be intelligent. I think the intelligence is, you know, like a field. You, you can go everywhere, but if you say, no, you can't, you can't, it's, you can't. So you can be intelligent and you can have your fantasy. I don't, so I think school must have more fantasy, be less square. So it seems as if on the one hand in the analogical uh, school we need space to, to, to give space to new ideas uh, and but technology also has problems with space because uh, it takes up so much time and there's so many uh, different stimuli uh, and so those two things are in common don't you think? Yes but this is not the, the same space because in the analogical it's a problem of space in your mind in the technological it's a problem of space with the time and with the time life because in your life you can do everything you just can't so you must make a choice but sometimes it's just really really complicated because you're the technology the technology is following you <laughs> all the time so you just must say stop sometimes you just stop i'm going to to be old now so i'm going to read the books i'm going to think and to to think about the space that I need in my mind because if you just run away with the technology, the technology is always um, is always growing up. It's more and more fun, but more and more practice and everything. But you can't run run with the technology. It's impossible because it's always, always, always in expansion. But your life is not. And what is your uh, experience with um, uh, video games, for example? Don't you think that, for example, school sees video games essentially as, uh, as they say, a game? So mm -hmm. nothing serious or of any depth? Mm -hmm. Well, this is not your view, right? Mm -hmm. No, I think video games are a way um, of thinking. Uh, this is a way of see the world because video games are um, another fantasy and sometimes video games are technical and analogical because you see wonderful places, you see myth in video games and the people that don't really like books can learn things about mythology, about about story and a history because uh, there are so many history games. So this is the point that the two words are, you know, just together. And video games are fantastic for this because you can and there is no generation gap. You can be old, you can be young, and you can be with your father and play a game with your father and explain things that you can't. So, video games and games are a way to meet people. Sometimes when you speak about video games, everyone say yes, but you're alone in your room, you don't go out for weeks. No, it's not true because you're not alone. You are with other people. You're. This is just another world, and sometimes they can't just, just can't understand. But if they are in, they can't go out mm. because they think, "Wow, I, I don't thought it was so wonderful." And you say, "Yeah, I told you." But 
So uh, maybe we could say that with t technology the problem is uh, to do with space and time and with uh, the the worst side of the old world, therefore school which with, with its um, constraints, is more to do something about freedom. Mm. Do you think freedom could be an important new ingredient in school? Yes, I think freedom is really important and we have no freedom in school. We must do what the teachers say always. And when you ask why, there is no answer because no one knows why or no one wants to tell you why. And there are not so many people that ask why because they are, you know, they don't want to know, they don't care. But if you ask why, sometimes you are in front of teacher that say, why? B because? Because it's like that. And you say, no, it's not like that. I want to know why, because if I don't know why, I don't know why I must stay here. Because freedom, if my life is not free, so why must I live? Why must I live for? Because freedom is the most important thing in a human life, I think. We fight for freedom, we, we live for freedom, because you can't be in a cage. You just can't. And uh, how do you relate what you think and feel with your um, the people of your age? It, do you yeah. do you feel alone in thinking this, or do you feel that there are a lot of people that feel and think this? And mm, it depends. But no, I really feel alone because. In my class we are, I don't know, we are 30 and we are 3 to ask why. <laughs> but when you meet someone that asks why, you are stronger. Because you say, hey, no, I'm not alone. But no, I think people of my age, they, are, they still hope. <laughs> I mean, there, there's no, there, it's not um, a dark end, you know, because we can go through if we are many to say why. I think we can be free at last. <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> I hope. Many people of my age, they just don't care about freedom because they don't taste the freedom and when you taste the freedom you can you can come back it's not possible because freedom is is like sweet you know you must be freer because freedom is really important for human life i think Thank you, Clara. That was that was wonderful. Thank you.